big bright room in an area that needs a big big bright room and in a climate that needs a big bright room. It's a writing centre and children, mostly children from age about six up to 17 or so come in and we invite them to write really. And the police knocked down the door in the cell. She met a mushroom. When we spoke about what we would do here, yes, it was with a serious endeavor in mind, creative writing, but kind of condition number one was it would have to be fun. And it is. Your books, you printed your books. The ability to put one word after another after another and create a fascinating sentence followed by another one or to write a screenplay is open to everybody and not just to, you know, the usual few. Watching them come up with these mad, mad ideas, I mean, um, what you want to do is to try and make sure that the, the mad ideas keep coming. Fighting Words, as you've probably guessed by now, is a creative writing centre. And we're located just a mile or two away, just across the river, um, up beside Croke Park. Roddy Doyle and I, we put it together a few years ago. And its purpose was to provide an opportunity for children and teenagers to engage with creative writing. Because we thought it, one of the strange things about Ireland, with, our, you know, with this amazing literary tradition, uh, for writing and for storytelling, but it's kind of bizarre that we actually don't have creative writing in our formal education system. And so we thought that it would be an idea to open a place where children could engage with creative writing and just to see would there be any interest. We opened in January 2009 and we discovered instantly, in fact before we even opened, we were swamped with applications uh, from schools and from children and the rest uh, to come to the place. So since we opened, and it's about four and a half years now, we've hosted over 40,000 children and teenagers in creative writing programs and workshops and courses. And it's all free, it's all provided free, um, and everyone's welcome. The courses are all delivered by volunteers, and we have 500 volunteer uh, tutors and mentors for writing. Our own inspiration for when we thought about the kind of model we would put together was 826 Valencia, which started in San Francisco. Some of you may have seen, probably have seen, Dave Eggers' famous TED speech back from 2008, uh, when he talked about his 826 Valencia program, which started, as I say, in San Francisco and has since expanded around the US. I think there are nine centers now around uh, the country. And Dave actually in that TED speech back in 2008 announced fighting words before we even existed. So it just put a little bit of pressure on and we had to then deliver and open the place. So it all worked out okay in the end. So this is uh, fighting words. You can see children arriving at the center. Pretty much the way we work is we work with primary school children every morning, secondary school kids in the afternoon. Uh, and with adults, particularly adults with special needs in, in the evenings, is, is the way it breaks down. But most of our students are primary school children and secondary school children. And then we also work with individual kids in, in, more, in programs during summer uh, and at weekends and out of school time. When I say that primary school kids come in the morning, this is just them entering. We have a magic door that they enter by and they come in for a two-hour workshop each day, each, every single morning. It's uh, an interactive e experience. The children work together for the first part of the workshop, writing the beginning of a story, and then they individually take it all their own directions, and it becomes their own personal story. And they all leave uh, at the end of their workshop with their own book that we print inside with their photograph and personal details on it. The secondary school kids would work on in sometimes more elaborate projects. It could be working on something over a term or over a year working towards a publication of a book that might be in the, the bookshops. You can see there that some primary children receiving their books uh, before they leave. They are real books. I can just show you uh, this kind of idea that we make actually in the center. 
for them to be able to leave with. The older children, we've published several of their books as well. The, they come in the form of anthologies. They are actually out, uh, outside the theatre. You can see them and have a look at them. But all of these books, we've published about, I think, about 10 anthologies of short stories and graphic fiction. And it's an ongoing programme. You can see some of them there receiving their books from, a, from Larkin, Larkin College in, uh, in Dublin's inner city. And there are some of the publications we've, we've made. And as you note from them as well, it isn't simply just straightforward fiction. We do all forms of creative writing, so it includes songwriting, uh, filmmaking, film animation, writing for radio, writing for TV, writing for media. Uh, you can even see a stamp there, your current stamp if you're buying one, uh, your 60 cent stamp is a, a story written uh, about Dublin uh, for Dublin City of Literature by a boy at Fighting Words and actually launched, just uh, for those that don't recognise him, that's the President of Ireland, Michael D. Higgins, <laughs> just a few weeks ago. I mentioned that we've got 500 volunteers and some of you will recognise three of those volunteers sitting there. And one of the ways in which we actually thank our volunteers, for those of you that are interested in getting involved, is if we have writers, either visiting writers or resident writers, uh, you know, that they would actually do have kind of a Q&A with them or workshops or just an interaction. And so we had uh, a few weeks back uh, what we call Fighting Bookers with Mr. Banville and Roddy Doyle and Anne Enright for, just for our volunteers as a thank you for their commitment to what we do. I've mentioned we work in uh, wider than fiction writing. It includes obviously music, songwriting. That's the stage of the, the Abbey Theatre or the Peacock where teenagers were writing plays which were read by professional actors at the Abbey. And that should make me highlight the, uh, the fact that we have loads of creative collaborations with other arts organisations who bring their expertise and their people to what we do totally pro bono. So we have partnerships with the Abbey and partnership with the Irish Times and the National Gallery, with the, the Print Museum, with, uh, with the Science Gallery. We're actually engaged in a f science fiction writing programme at the moment with brown bag film animation. I'm sure I'm leaving several out, but the idea being that we, other organisations with great expertise, bring it to us and share it with, for the advantage of the children to be able to write in that genre. When I mentioned as well that we host 10,000 students a year, which is brilliant, uh, we could actually, if we had the resources, everything we advertise uh, is oversubscribed five or six times over. So in fact, if we had the resources and the space, we could be hosting 50,000 children a year in the, in, the, in the centre. And one of the ways we try to address that uh, expansion, our access, is the Cinemobile, which is this uh, monstrous mobile uh, cinema that we've brought around the country this past year, and that will keep on going. It, it seats 100 people, it's a full cinema. But uh, we're able to reproduce the Fighting Words experience on it, which is great. And we've had it in several locations around the country. That includes Northern Ireland over the last year, and that will continue. I mentioned as well that we were inspired by the 826 model in the United States. We've ourselves inspired other models throughout Europe now. There are some of our friends uh, in London, Stockholm, in Barcelona and Milan, who've opened their versions of the same idea in their cities as well. And our next step from Fighting Words is actually to open in Belfast. That building there is the Skynos Centre in East Belfast. There'll be a Fighting Words Centre there in 2014. And the Verbal Arts Centre in Derry, there will be a Fighting Words programme working there as well uh, over the coming months. Now, I'm just watching my time because I know I've been rabbiting on about what we do, but actually with Fighting Words, the best way in which you can actually sense, get a good understanding of what we do, is to participate, is to experience it, either as a volunteer or as a student. And so, with your help, which I hope you'll give me, I'm going to subject you to being a primary school class for the next few minutes. And all, the, all of you together, we're going to write the beginning, just the beginning of a story. Now normally we'd have two hours in which to do this, and we've got about six or seven or eight minutes. But it's just to get a start, to give you the sense of it. I'm going to assume that you all know that for a story uh, you need basics like characters and plot setting, beginnings and ends. Uh, usually we go through this process with children and when you ask what you need for a story, 
you're told, of course, stuff like pencils and pages and rubbers and rubbers, I should say, are erasers for those who aren't Ireland based. And, uh, <laughs> but anyway, eventually they always get to the point, which is you need characters, and you need plot and you need everything. So what we're going to do with your cooperation is, can you please, a few of you, just give me ideas for, we want characters, okay? So a lead character, it doesn't have to be a person, it can be a thing, it can be anything but just some ideas for a lead character. Anything. <laughs> well, one at a time. Five-story robot. A five-story <laughs> robot. Okay, there's one. Another one? A little brown dog. A little brown, dog. A little brown dog. Another one? A dragon. a dragon? Okay, a dragon. Okay, now, we're going to decide our lead character. I can't see you all properly, but you all have to close your eyes and I'm going to call these three out. You've got to put up your hand for the one you prefer, and we'll see which, one, which lead character we're going to go for. And the reason to close your eyes is there's no peer pressure from anybody else. <laughs> okay, so close your eyes. Number one, a five-story robot. Number two, and you can only vote once. Number two, a little brown dog. And number three, a dragon. Okay, I think it's our five-story robot. <laughs> Can, does our five-story robot have a name? Billy. Ted, Ted, Ted. Ted or Billy. Okay, we got Ted or Billy. Let's have a vote. Who wants first name to be Billy? And who wants his name or her name to be Ted? I think it's Ted. <laughs> okay. Does Ted the five-story robot have, he does have, a best mate? You gotta tell me who, okay, it's Billy. <laughs> but next question, who or what is Billy? <laughs> not, not everyone together. A little brown dog, okay. Okay, now what is Ted, the five-story robot's greatest ambition? Any ideas? <laughs> to kill, to have a dragon? Kill to kill the dragon, okay. <laughs> and maybe a couple more ideas. Greatest ambition? Open a sweet shop. Open a sweet shop, okay. And one more? To, to fit through a door. Okay. Okay, now, all right, close your eyes. No cheating. Okay, who wants Ted's greatest ambition to be to kill a dragon? Greatest ambition to open a sweet shop? And greatest ambition to fit through a door? Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's to fit through a door. And Ted's greatest fear? Surfing. Rain. Rain. Okay, rain is one idea. Surfing. Hmm? Surfing. Surfing. Uh, one more. Blobfish. Okay. Last time. Close the eyes. Okay, greatest fear. Is it rain? Is it surfing? I think we know what it's going to be. <laughs> Is it blobfish? Uh, okay. Okay, so we've got characters, we've got greatest ambition, greatest fear. We only have a few minutes left, but let's try now in a few sentences. Who'd give me an opening sentence? You've got your characters, you've got a basic idea. I see a hand up here. Can we have an opening sentence? He lives in the, he lives in the box of the M50. Okay. <laughs> Opening sentence, he lives in a box on the M50. <laughs> okay, next sentence, who does? You've got to tell us who does. It's a bloody big box. It's a bloody big box. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to tell me who they are, because we're going to run out of time really quick, so the characters have to be in there. So, next sentence. 
Can I put up a, a hand? Yeah? It didn't have a door. Next sentence. He had a cinema inside his box. Okay. Who? We don't know who he is. <laughs> so do we go back to the first line and say, Ted? Ted lived in a box on the M50. It's a bloody big box. It didn't have a door. He had a cinema inside his box. Okay, his best mate, his greatest fear. Another couple his of sentences. Best Billy was waiting outside the box. His best friend Billy was no. waiting outside the box. Blobfish. With a blobfish. Okay. <laughs> Trying to find the door. Are trying to fit through the door? Okay. One more. Next line. Bit of dialogue. Right, Ted. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm just about, to, our, our time is about to close down. So you get the idea, okay? And if you were a primary school class, you'd now, in a couple of minutes, you'd pick a title, and then you'd go your own ways to your own tables, and you would, with these characters and this beginning, you'd take your story, what, 2,000 of you, 2,000 different directions, and uh, we'd have 2,000 different stories. And this is what we do every single morning with primary school children. They write their stories, and they leave with their books, and the books have blank pages at the back so as they can continue the story and continue the story. I think I have one more slide I wanted to show you that I would just leave it. It's just some words from uh, one of the students who was in with us. But really what we provide is the opportunity, the freedom to write. Anyway, uh, thank you very much. I think that's my time up.